Welcome to Corporate Finance. Welcome to session six of Introduction to Corporate Finance. My name is Greg Pierce. I'm the finance coach. And uh, today we're going to talk about discounted cash flow valuation. Uh, this is slightly different than session five where we had a lump sum and we were compounding and discounting. Now we're going to look at um, separate and distinct cash flows, uh, sometimes different cash flows every year and sometimes uh, equivalent cash flows every year, which we're going to call annuities. So we're going to uh, have several uh, key equations we're going to need to know uh, in this chapter, four of them to be specific. One is present value of an annuity. And again, I can use these equations if and only if the uh, amounts I'm investing are the same amount each year. And that's what we mean by an annuity. Same amount each month, same amount each period. Same amount each month, same amount each year, and so on. Again, when we're doing uh, present value, we're bringing our cash flows back to the left. And when we're compounding and calculating future value, we're looking out to the right. So uh, second equation will be the future value of an annuity. Um, we're going to look at that in some detail. Uh, also, present value of a perpetuity, which is a, an annuity that goes on forever. So the key word in the problem will be forever when you know you have a perpetuity, same amount, same exact amount each year, each period, forever. And finally, we're going to go over a topic uh, of effective annual rate, or EAR. Uh, when you see a rate quoted on your credit card, is that the rate you're really paying? Or is it something, uh, if it says in small print, compounded daily, compounded monthly, compounded quarterly? Um, are you really paying that rate? So if you, if you get a, a credit card and it says 18% compounded monthly, are you really paying 18% or is it something different than that? Uh, the 18% being a stated rate or a quota rate. So we're going to look at the EAR and calculate it uh, to see how it can benefit you so you understand exactly what you're paying. Lots of learning objectives in this chapter, um, seven to be specific. We're going to look at the future value uh, with multiple cash flows. So in the session five, we only have one cash flow, one lump sum, and we were discounting it and compounding it. Now we're going to have several cash flows, and how do we handle them? Uh, we're going to look at present value with multiple cash flows, uh, present value of an annuity. So again, an annuity is the same amount each period. Uh, present value of it, of it. So we're going to discount cash flows back to the left, and we're going to future value those annuities, taking them out to the right. Uh, we're also going to look at perpetuities, which are cash flows, uh, annuities that go on forever. Uh, we're going to look at the EAR and compounding and also different loan types, which may use some of these concepts. Let's take on future values with multiple cash flows, objective number one first. I can uh, calculate these uh, in two different ways to calculate these future values. Again, I'm compounding out to the right, and I may have uh, a bunch of cash flows that are different. For instance, I compound each balance uh, one period forward at a time, or I can calculate the future value of each cash flow and then add them up, and I prefer... Uh, method number two, but you can certainly use either method and you should come up with the same answer. Here's some examples. Again, this session is heavily example laden and uh, we will go over these examples to uh, demonstrate the various concepts. Uh, you think you'll be able to deposit $4,000 at the end of each uh, year for the next three years into a bank account paying 8% interest. You currently have $7,000 in the bank today. How much will you have in three years and in four years? Now, Technically, we don't really, even though you have 4,000, 4,000, 4,000, we have 7,000 today and zero in year four. So we really do not have an annuity. So we have to go back to chapter uh, five, session five, and look at um, doing each one of these cash flows separately, one at a time, and compounding them out into the future um, to see what we have at the end of three years. So I draw a timeline. I'm going to, going to encourage you for all future sessions, we want to draw timelines when we have multiple cash flows. Uh, a lot of you are graphic learners, and drawing a timeline will help. So I have 7,000 today. So I put the 7,000 at time zero, 4,000 deposited at the end of year one, 4,000 at the end of year two, and 4,000 at the end of year three. We assume that these amounts get deposited at the end of each year, uh, December 31st. So I take the first 7,000, multiply it by 1.08, and get 75.60 at the end of year one. On that $7,000, I drop down the 4,000. Again, it's going to gain no interest because I put it in there on December 31st. The end of year one, I have 11.560. To find out what I have at the end of year two, I multiply that amount, that summation, by 1.08, and I get 12,484.80. Um, 
again, I drop down that $4,000 that I'm depositing at the end of year two on December 31st, and I get 16,480,480. Multiply that by 1.08, and I get uh, 17. Uh, 80358, uh, and I add the 4,000 to that, and I have uh, 218038. Uh, if I want to see what I'll have at the end of year four with no deposit, I multiply that amount by uh, 1.08, and I get uh, almost uh, $24,000. So again, all I'm doing, all I've done with this is use concepts from session number five and project those um, cash values forward using future value equals present value times 1 plus R to the T.